Lucas. This is Julian. And this is Bread Up, and we're hoping you are getting your bread up, guys. Another down week, not the best week in the world, I gotta say. It's been a rough couple, three weeks. We've been saying that for three, four weeks now, but you know yeah. what? That's the market. That's Mr. Market. He will do what he needs to do in the short run, but in the long run, we know that bad boy is going up. Always in the long run. But yeah, now we had a, yeah we had a similar week to the week before with lots of pullbacks on pretty much overall every sector um, in the market, which you know again leads to great buying opportunities. Hundred um, percent. And you know it wasn't the greatest week in gains, but um, it's pretty bad. It, it it was you know we're we're still down pretty bad, and, and if you look at the overall market, you know it's we still got room to come down more and. You know, just what happened in March last year, we came down so far and, you know, we were just on a straight recovery for a long time and we're pushing all time highs higher than we ever were before COVID was. So these pullbacks yeah. are expected they, they were, in this market. They, it's, it's healthy. And I mean, I knew a correction was coming. I just didn't know, you know, obviously it was coming this quick, you know, and it was this right now. Um, but you know what? That's that's the best thing about being in the market is is dealing with this volatility. And I think when you're a learning trader like us and like you, a lot of you guys watching, this is healthy. Sometimes you need that loss to kind of correct yourself and go, oh, you know what? Maybe my judgment wasn't right there. I didn't have a well diversified portfolio. My risk tolerance wasn't too well. You know, especially on low and mid cap stocks, you're getting beaten up right now. I know um, a good fifty percent of my of my portfolio is low and mid cap growth stocks right now. Um, a couple of them are long positions, and they're doing okay, you know, but still, they're getting slapped across the face, and I think it, it's healthy to have this. Um, but you know what? If you're doing your due diligence, if you're playing over the long run, you're buying these dips. You know, even if the dip becomes a bigger trough, you're still playing it, and you're still buying it, because in the end of the day, you don't need to hit the perfect low and sell at the perfect high. You know, you can buy a little bit when it's on this downtrend and sell right when it's going up, you know? Mm -hmm. That's playing the stock, and that's, that's a good way of string, swing trading it. So keep that in mind. Um, this volatility, in my opinion, will not last for much longer than probably another month of volatility. You know, probably this time next month, I'm sure we'll have the beginning of a sweep and giving it's just it's just spring. It's uh, summer's in the air. You got the butterflies chirping. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Summertime's coming. Butterflies out. don't chirp, but they they were probably chirping in there. But no, I think I I think this recovery is going to come very very quickly um, in about a month. Um, but you know what? It's it's a combination of, in my opinion, what I think is going on right now. We both, me and Joel, both have our own uh, separate theories as to what's going on. But um, it started off with this idea that the uh, the Fed raised interest rates, and when you raise interest rates, that basically means it it costs more to borrow money, um, which is how you de combat inflation. But mm -hmm. um, there's a little economics lesson right there. But um, what I think is what happens is GameStop rally just a couple of weeks ago was rallying and all these new investors are flooding in thinking they can make a billion dollars, you yeah, know, yeah. they're flooding in, they're, oh, I can, I, anything I pick is going up, I'm, I'm a great investor. And big money was kind of like, well, you know, your computer's nope. talking, um, My bad. <laughs> you're good. But big money was talking, they're like, oh, you know what, you, you know, you can't make your money here, you know why, because we're going to pull back. So I think it's weeding out the small retail investors that quite frankly, have a weak stomach for volatility, and we talk about it all the time in this podcast. You need to have that strong stomach. But that's what I think this part of this pullback is. Julian, what do you think about it? Yeah, well, I mean, just like I was saying, I think that these pullbacks, like if I could go back to the to March 4th of 2020 when the SPY was at $200, below $200 almost, and get in on those companies, on those pullbacks, I would do that in a heartbeat. And I feel like right now, I'm going to be looking back at this time months from now and be like, man, I, I'm going to wish that I could have gotten in more companies on that discount than I, than I did because eventually we're going to be, you're going to be like, oh, this market is just green. It's going up. It's above the 70 RSI. That's, that's, that's when things start to get scary and you're looking for that pullback and that pullback might not even come around again. So that's why this time and all these companies that, you know, like Tesla, Amazon, Apple, they're just offered huge discounts to just get in on those companies and hold them long term. And we're going to get in on, on some of those companies today to that, show you guys. No, it's definitely. And you know what? Now that we're talking about volatility and dealing with volatility, the best way to deal with this is, Julian, what's the best way to do with we're it? We're going to talk about ETFs. So. And indexes as well. Those yeah. are the top two picks, but more ETFs than indexes. And um, we'll kind of go into what each are because they commonly get confused as an investor. And I think for the majority of people watching this who aren't activists, enterprising investors who are swing trading every three days or every once a week or twice a week, these are your best options. Uh, most of your 
uh, people's 401ks are developed out of ETFs and indexes. Uh, they're a passive income source or passively, not passive income, but they're passively uh, invested uh, income source and generated assets. So yeah, we'll talk about that, but that is, it's the number one way to deal with volatility. Now, uh, what are the differences? Um, basically, they all consist of mutual funds. Mutual fund is basically you pay in for someone to manage your money for you. Um, that's the majority of people's options are. And ETFs trade like stocks. Indexes are actually, you can't trade during the day like a stock. I didn't know this. Mm-hmm. I actually had to look into it just the past couple of days. Indexes, actually, you can only trade them at the end of the trading day. At the very end, whatever the value is at, you can sell out or you can buy into it. Indexes are managed more actively, ETFs trade like stocks. You can trade an ETF like you trade Apple or you trade Amazon or, you know, you can trade anytime during the day. Mm-hmm. So it's a group of companies. So yeah. like that's when we're saying it's to help you with this volatility. Um, if, you're, if your portfolio is just diversified among individual stocks, um, you know, that, that could help you growing your account at a faster rate. But at the same time is that's when, when there's market pullbacks and bad weeks, two weeks in a row you're going to really see some down losses in your portfolio. But yeah, and that's where ETFs yeah, come in. Exactly. When you can put those in your portfolio and go heavy in on each, some of these ETF and indexes, mm-hmm. like the SPY. SPY's um, an ETF. Like uh, some of these other ones, like uh, UT, UVXY, what are some other... Uh, yeah, but we have a lot of popular SQQQ. ETFs that we'll, we'll, we'll go over in a little bit at the, at the end of this. But, I mean, really what ETF and index is, is you're buying a basket hundreds, maybe even thousands of stocks in a certain industry, in a certain sector. They might be a mid-cap growth stock, a mid-cap tech stock, a big, large cap. You know, um, when you see like, oh, S&P 500, the best, the biggest uh, and most popular ETF is the SPY. That's where the majority of option calls are on. The majority of people's uh, money, Investco is a company, is a, is, a, is a management company, BlackRock. You'll see these names on ETFs, and that all that means is the investment company behind the ETF. And ETFs trade just as those stocks, but you're buying thousands and hundreds of stocks within a certain sector or maybe even across the whole market. So when you have a down day, right, it's very unlikely, let's say you have one equity, like one stock, and it's a bad day, you, you can lose a large sum of money. But if you go down 2% on an ETF, I mean, the majority of chances, if it's a bad day in the market, not every stock in that ETF, unless it's very sector specific, is going to get beaten down too much. So that's why having a good portfolio of ETFs, as well as indexes, can really help you with volatility. And I have two portfolios. I manage one on Webull, and I have a Charles Schwab account. My Charles Schwab is almost all ETFs and indexes. Mm-hmm. It's like I like it's my my passive um, investing source. My Webull, it's actively swing trading. You know, high risk, high reward situations. Yeah, if you're not an active uh, investor or trader who's constantly going every day checking your portfolio, um, ETFs and indexes they're really the most common they are um, used thing to invest in for anyone you know anyone who's just trying to put money in every month into an ETF and not even really look at it for 40 years that's that's what we're talking about that's that's that low risk low volatility style of investing that could really um, benefit um, you as a new trader and you know especially right now in this market buying in on some of these companies that have been overvalued for the last year um, it could be it could be kind of risky, and that's what we're seeing. Like waiting for these entry points on these pullbacks, like what happened these last two weeks, is really going to give um, you know long term. If you're really just not looking at the companies and you're you're going to buy in and hold for years, uh, this is the best time to get in right now. On, Without uh, doubt, on these companies. Yeah, just times like these are when think that the majority of the market is down. Right, so that means the ETF as a whole is down. Meaning, you know what? When there's a recovery, when there's a rebound, that ETF will increase in value. But there's a variety of sectors that go from very broad and generic to very specific. You could even have commodity ETFs. But the biggest indication is I prefer ETFs over indexes because I can trade them just as frequently as I can trade a stock. Between the trading hours of we're on West Coast, so it's six thirty mm-hmm. to one, right? It's or, just like buying a stock. Yeah, it's like buying. When a we stock. say spy, that means. The SPY is the ticker for the uh, yeah. S&P 500. I just wanted to yeah, we should make that like, clear because <laughs> I was confused that. on that when I first started out. The SPY. Like, like, spy, like, who, like, who, who am I peeping on, bro? Yeah, so <laughs> SPY means the S&P 500. It's the most valuable 500 companies um, in the world, I think. Yeah. So that's it's the best, most so, yeah. strong ETF to be in if you want to have that long-term uh growth in your account yeah there's a variety of them though there's there you can go online you can go in top 100 uh most like 
highest volume traded ETFs. That's honestly what I like to go into if I'm trying to find new ones that are maybe lower valued. And what I like to do is preferably, this is people who, if you're interested in looking for a new ETF, go top 100 highest traded or most volume ETFs and then look for something under you know $75. And then all of a sudden, okay, this is a high volume ETF getting traded under $75. This is good room to grow, especially now when uh, things are in a downtrend. You can definitely get really, really good deals. Um, indexes work a lot like mutual funds, if you want to know the difference. It's basically a f- a lot of them have initial buy-ins. So like if you go on Vanguard, for example, which is like a brokerage platform, um, it's usually meant for people that have a lot more money or retirement or an IRA. Uh, you go on a Vanguard and you have to, like, the initial buy-ins are $2,500. So it can be a large sum of money to start off with. So that's why we prefer, you know, people that want to start trading. I always tell them to start on ETFs. Indexes will always be there. But um, yeah, that's that's the key difference in managing your volatility and managing differences but as always, like if you guys have questions and concerns, if you want like maybe a cool recommendation from us, obviously we're not investment generals. You know, we're not you know managing you mm-hmm. know your grandparents and your parents' four hundred one k's. But these are recommendations. We have a variety. My favorites I have them written down right here is TQQQ. That's three Q's. Um, is UVXY, which um, is a reverse. It's a shorting ETF. Yeah, and we'll talk about that. In we'll a talk about bit, that in but... a second. Um, yeah, and then Spy. We just talked about that, and then QQQ is. Um, I think, I messed, I think it's an SQQQ. But anyways, those are those stand for basically what those tickers are usually are is the company. And if it's QQQ, it's usually the company Invesco. I just like them. They have a really good track record. And that's another thing is when you're t- buying ETFs, do your due diligence like you're buying a stock. See what their top 10 holdings are. See what companies they're in. Um, because if they're a bad track record and it's not very good, there's no point in owning that ETF. They're not all created equal, just as all stocks aren't created equal. Mm-hmm. You need to say the same research you're doing with ETFs. But yeah, Julian, talk about UVXY. What's that difference? Yeah, so this this would be a this is a little advanced strategy, but it is something to keep in mind and something to add to I think everyone should have this in their watch list if you're gonna be investing, and that's a reverse ETF fund. Um, so that would be something like UVXY and Schwix, uh, TVIX, where it's basically these companies, they mirror the S&P 500 in the opposite direction. So when the market goes down, like last week, these companies will have these spikes or these ETFs, these leveraged ETFs will spike up on down days. And that's when you can, if you add these watch, if you add the, these reverse ETFs into your watch list, when you get up and if you are an active trader and you are doing your due diligence, you should know what the day is going to be at market open. You know what's if, it, yeah. if it's a down day or, or, or a green day. And you know you can make some money on having these in your portfolios, just having them, having them buy and just watching them when the market goes down. And you can make money when, when the market goes down. And that's, that's what we're here to, to show you guys on how to make money in any case scenario in the stock market. I, I like to call them pessimist ETFs because, you know, it's, it's kind of a down. It's, it's, you buy them when things are not going too well. And that's, what you, that's when you would do them. Um, but over the long run, they do decrease in value because over the long run, we've seen unless they unforeseen huge meteor hits Earth or yeah. apocalypse, these are our, the companies our, you want to get in and get out yeah, as soon as our possible. Our economy is always going up. So because of that, these things depend on the economy tanking. And these are only good in very short periods of time given these past couple of weeks. They've been great. They're rallying high because people are, oh, it's going to keep going lower. But once there's a recovery back in, they go right back down to low. So they're really good if you are just wanting to make some quick money on a really down day. You know, get on these ETFs because you can trade them just as a And stock. they're cheaper too. Like I said, like the, um, for example, the UVXY... It's only $8, and when the market goes down, normally it spikes up to $20, which is a, it's a huge gain, and it's just something to add to your watch list. Like, it's never a company, you're not, I'm not telling you to invest in these companies in long term, like, hell no. Like, no. that's the opposite of what I'm trying to say. This yeah. is only for this volatile time we're in right now, really, where one day it's green, the next day it's red, and then the next day it's red, and then green, and there's no... There's no specific direction you're seeing. and Yeah, there's a very, to, to, to repeat what he's saying, this is a short-term negative downtrend periods in the market. These reverse ETFs are what you buy. But I recommend, if you just want to, if you're watching us and you just love hearing the investment terminology and learning, and you just don't really, you know, you don't feel confident enough managing your own portfolio, uh, your own portfolio, sorry, that's English there, um, buy ETFs, buy a whole bunch of them, and hold them and put them away. It doesn't matter what the market's doing. You can close your eyes, and in 20 years, you can come back. I think 
Um, I, read, I read a great book. I just finished it again. I read it almost two times over. It's The um, Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. And he has this awesome, awesome excerpt where he's basically saying, he tells, was actually the commentary section of it, but he says that um, it's, you know what, if you're buying in ETFs and these open market funds, you can buy them and they don't even, shouldn't even have a price on them. You shouldn't even be allowed to see the price in 20 year, until 20 years later because that's how you should act. So if you're looking just to buy, get into the market, but you don't really want to be swing trading and thinking you're the wolf on Wall Street, um, then really that's what we're encouraging everyone to do. This is kind of like the generic uh, mm, yeah. podcast video to tell you guys this is how you get into the market. This is the best and easiest way if you're young, if you're old. This is the way to go. Uh, I think but, it's fitting for this uh, time that definitely. we um, talk about this because normally we're just about finding those that next company, that next big company and getting in on that. But we also got to realize that a lot of people – especially right now, um, this market is, is very volatile and it's not necessarily a bull market like we were two years ago. So having ETFs, um, we both, you know, we realized that it's something that we really want to uh, talk about and share that it's a slow growth thing. And that's what we're, we're saying is you don't have to look at these for years because you're not going to, it's not going to go up $10 in a day. Like these ETFs grow slowly over time, but they also you know, when there's a down day, they, they go down very little bit. So that's what we're saying at low volatility. These ETFs are a great long-term investment. Yeah. The, I mean, it's almost guaranteed to get, to increase your money over the course of anywhere from six months to 20 years. You'll see an increase in your dollar amount by putting it into an ETF. The right ETFs, most ETFs are well balanced. You just have to see who they're managed by and always see their top 10 holdings. Usually that's public information. You have to, you're allowed to see what their top 10 stocks they have that the the highest amount of holding they have. And um, that's the best way to do it, really. I mean, that's especially in this time, I think a lot of people are all here about the stock market. It's kind of become this like meme craze. And oh, that's yeah. why there's this big pullback. I think big money is taking their money out of positions and they're hurting the retail investor to weed them out. And you know what? That's whatever. Because if you're a real investor, this should not phase you. And I think that's the, that's the the key takeaway is what we're saying. But you know what? You don't need to be the Wolf of Wall Street. You don't need to have your broker on one phone. And you're, you know, you're on Robin Hood and you're just trading it by the day. Buy the ETFs, walk away. You don't matter what the market's saying. Someone's like, oh, it's down today. It's been down 20%, whatever. It's like, I don't care, man. I don't care. I own ETFs. You know, I own indexes. That's all you got to say. So you're eliminating that, that huge loss, but you're also, you know, you're guaranteeing that slow increase it's, it's, over time. It's, it's slow, though. You know, keep in mind, the ETFs are a slow uh, generating source of passive investing income. They will generate a value, but you know what? It's not going to be at the, uh, yeah. the rate some equities and stocks will be. But yeah, that's, that's basically our <laughs> wrapping statement for ETFs and indexes. Again, if you guys have questions... Shoot me and Julian a DM. I'm the Lucas Rowan on Instagram. I'm Julian McHale. Also, um, Bread Up on Bread Up Pod. Bread Up Pod is, on Insta. So Instagram. always shoot us a DM or you know whatever questions. Even on, if you're watching on YouTube, shoot us that. But now, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about the stocks. We're, but, not, we're gonna get away from ETFs and we're gonna say we're gonna tell you what we think what we're buying this week. Um, that's what we do. Like we said, it's it was a red week. Yeah. Every company that I've been wanting to get in, um, I had an opportunity to get in. Like I said, uh, we've had. Insane sell-offs. I'm gonna go right into mine. Um, one stock that I think is a fantastic stock, especially right now for a buy and long term, and it's a uh, Square. It's a uh, ticker is SQ. And, FinTech, right? FinTech. Well, it's a, it's the it's the thing that you plug into your phone or iPad, and you can accept payment. Um, oh, sure. From you know credit card, your Apple Pay. Gotcha. But it's just that that form of. Um, transaction for small businesses they're really using square it's a simple thing you just plug into your phone and you can accept debit credit card payments from anyone and um this company has been having some insane growth over the last year and it's it's been one of my comp one of my favorite companies and you know right when covid hit it was at 32 dollars and wow it's 216 right we now. pushed all the way up to wow. 280 dollars wow. and like i said i wanted to get in on that company but it was just so overbought and i was like oh this is i gotta wait for this best entry point and i think right at 216 218 dollars for um for square it's a it's an insane buy um, long term like we could see a pullback more like i said we don't know exactly how how bad we're gonna sell off in the market but um square is a company that's not going away it is fintech mm -hmm. um it's 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 the future of 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 business payments and small businesses have already implemented it and it's 
It's a huge company, and, and I, I recognize it's not the going CEO. Away. The CEO is named Jack Dorsey, who's really outspoken. He's a really good CEO. So obviously, you know, if you're a value investor, management's huge, and that's a good. I I, I like that CEO a lot. I didn't even know that he managed Square, but yeah, yeah. So it's a it's an expensive buy. Like I said, I I really like doing options on these expensive uh, stocks because you can get a hundred shares for a very good price. Um, we will make a video talking more about options and how to do those. But like I said, it's an expensive buy, but um, it's, I don't think that this deal or this sell off is gonna, is gonna go that much lower. And I think that there's gonna be a run that everyone's gonna be wishing that they got in right now. Definitely. So that's, uh, SQ, right? It's where? SQ. Awesome. My pick for the week is Workhorse, WKHS is the ticker, WKHS. You've probably heard of it before. You, we've talked about it here before. It's a delivery truck, electric delivery truck and delivery vehicles. They're getting into aircrafts. Um, they went from $45 down to 20 in a day. Now they're at trading about $13, right? Yep. $13.73. Insane. I mean, yes, they did, they lost a USPS contract, but they didn't even lose it. Honestly, they just they just fell out of talks. They're still in works with getting it. But this company is it's huge. You're talking about delivery vehicles that are that are electric. I mean, think of FedEx, think of Amazon. This is the company that'll be setting the pace. Maybe they might not be in those companies, but this is definitely a company that's setting the pace, and they should be rewarded at thirteen dollars a share from forty-five dollars down to their thirty dollar drop. Insane, insane value. I see this going to twenty dollars in the next two to three weeks. At minimum, it's going rolling back up to twenty dollars. So this is a good chance to get in. It's yeah. very undervalued. It will explode. Um, I love it a lot, but that's Workhorse, WKHS, not much else to say there. That's my pick. Yep, that's that's it for me. The, just keep an eye on, you know, a lot of, any companies that you have, like I said, we could have picked 10 other companies to make our picks for the week because they're, everything is on sale. And to us, to our criteria, or to, to me, it's a it's a buy right now for, Definitely. for my companies. And, and the, Yeah, and that's it. Uh, guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're listening, thank you for listening. If you're watching, thank you so much for watching. This has been Lucas. It's been Julian. Guys, take care. Peace.